Hey guys, it's Annalie and Annie, and you are listening to the Let's Go There podcast, where we're going to go there on all the hard topics you want to hear about. Yes, we are going to look crazy for you, and we're going <laughs> to dig deep into those things that you have been dying to hear about, but have not asked those questions for fear of looking a little crazy. Uh, today's episode, we are going into the third temple. Yes. I know. Yeah. This is awesome. Well, we did Red Heifers last week, so we're going to dive into Third Temple. Yes. Yeah. Well, if you listen last week, it was about the Red Heifers and how it's the most significant thing that has happened in the last 2,000 years. So, of course, the next thing is, what is this Third Temple all about? Right. And we understand a lot of people don't know a lot about this, so we're going to give you some basics and we're going to dig deep on yeah. some important, important things. Yeah, this is, this is huge. So, I and yeah, we, you know, so talking about the red heifers last week, um, within their age, you know, we're looking at potentially one of those, you know, out of the five, yeah. uh, going over to Israel, they're going to be inspecting and, and watching them to stay pure. And, and if one of those red heifers, which they believe that one of them will suffice mm-hmm. and pass the test, mm-hmm. they're ready to be sacrificed in the next year. And then that is when then the sacrifices can be resumed on Temple Mount. That is wild. Yeah. So that's yeah. a that's a time marker like we were talking about. Yeah. That's why these things are important and why we're looking at it. Um, you know, uh, and diving into what the Bible actually says. Yes. And I mean, all of the stuff for the third temple is ready. Yes. They got the vessels in there. I yeah. was looking and they got priestly garments, the incense altar, the gold menorah, yes. the table of the showbread, everything that's needed to go in there. They're like, we are, we've, we're prepared. We have it ready. Yeah. So the red heifer was like the missing piece. The missing, they needed exactly. that. Yes. And now it's like. They're ready it's to coming. go. I know. It's so wild. Yeah. Even, I think, an altar that they mm-hmm. have um, made to the prescriptions of what the Bible says mm-hmm. that, that can be transported up yeah. there. As in assembled. Assembled quickly. Yeah. Taken down just as fast if they need yes. to after this. I mean, it's like yeah. they're ready to go. And the priests, the Kohanim, have been already training and performing reenactments for yeah. this. So they are ready to yeah. go. This People whole don't thing. know the Sanhedrin mm-hmm. has been reconvened. And we're talking like that's like that's that's Bible language. That's when like mm-hmm. Jesus was walking on the earth mm-hmm. and you're there in the gospels with him and you have the Sanhedrin. Well, they mm-hmm. have the Sanhedrin again. Crazy. I know. Crazy. Yeah. So this is why it matters because It is all converging together. So just a little bit of like a history on the temples. Yeah, take us there. Yeah, yeah, so we have the first temple, which is Solomon's temple, that um, David prepared it and Solomon assembled it. Right. That's in 1 Chronicles 29, if you want to look into that. The second temple, also known as Herod's temple, was the temple that Jesus and the apostles Uh, went to when they were living. And so now this will be the third temple that will be created and it's going to be by the Dome of the Rock. And that's why we know in Ezekiel 42, 20, it says he measured it on four sides. It had a wall around it, Mm -hmm. 500 cubits long, 500 wide to separate the holy areas from the common. And so that's how we know that this is talking about the third temple. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people get confused and I think... Some of you might be going, wait a minute, you're talking about the third temple and, um, you know, and, and these sacrifices that are really, you know, we're looking at, you know, potentially within a year ready to start, you mm-hmm. know, reconvening everything getting put in place and we're still here. Mm-hmm. So we talked about how, like, I think the next time we want to talk about the rapture and yes. dive into and what that, that topic. Yes, we're going to um, go there on that. And the timing mm-hmm. of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but the point is, you're here. This, yeah. I'm. We're we're, we're still here, here right now, and so. these things are happening mm-hmm. in real time. So we keep talking about this is why it matters, mm-hmm. you know. And and I think the big question then is, you know, what are Christians supposed to do with this third temple? Mm-hmm. Like, why does this matter to me? Right. What mm-hmm. What's the point of the what's third the temple? Point? Yeah. Why does Yeah? Because we're over here. Israel is like another country. How it's does like, this affect yes. me? Mm-hmm. It's like people don't care about things I say until it like you know there, touches it's, home. Yeah, it touches mm-hmm. home. It's uh, I can't go to my Starbucks around the corner. Right. You know, right. it's yeah, like yeah. otherwise it doesn't really matter or yes. affect me. Um, and uh, what we're talking about is diving 
and opening up living in the book of Revelation. Mm-hmm. Um, so just like you said with Ezekiel 42, 20, mm-hmm. and how we know that this is not the millennial mm-hmm. temple, because yeah. there will be a millennial temple. Right. Mm-hmm. This is the third temple that is talked about in the book of, of Revelation mm-hmm. by John. And I would say, don't you think, Annalie, the biggest misconception is, um, I mean, we're hearing it from pastors, from leaders, um, uh, very uh, forcefully saying, hey, you guys are being led astray. You should have nothing to do with this third mm-hmm. temple. It ends badly uh, for everybody, yeah. for Christians. Like, like stay away from yes. it. Don't participate. Do not support. And, and yet, we want to show what is, we talked about it last week, if you get nothing else out of this conversation, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. whose temple, temple is it? Yeah. Whose yes, temple is it? For sure. Yeah. And how do we know? It's Revelation 11.1. 11. 1. Yeah. It's yeah. God's temple. God's temple. That's it's what God's it says. Temple. So that's what, I mean, we believe what the word says. Um, and going back to that, because my background is we never learned at church, yeah. and I'm a pastor's kid, we never learned about Israel or why yeah. they matter. Um, they were kind of their own people and they do their own thing. And we believed in, you know, the temples inside of us yes. and that's all that matters. Right. And, and then we we're in this replacement theology mentality without even knowing it. Oh, yeah. And come to find out we're starting to support the antichrist agenda right. and, you know, not caring about the temple, wanting there to be no sacrifices yeah. and all of that when God is wanting that to take place. Right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So just like you said, Ezekiel 42, 20, it talks about a wall that the prophet Ezekiel, he's mm-hmm. seeing, he's cast, he's brought into the future, yeah. which is our present day, mm-hmm. like what's the right near now. future for mm-hmm. us. And uh, there is, he's measuring out, but there's this wall there. Mm-hmm. So when people say that this is the millennial temple, why would there be a wall that separates the holy from the common, or it's really translated the profane thing? Mm-hmm. So right there, we know a wall separation of a profane thing. There's not going to be a profane thing in the millennial reign of Jesus Christ mm-hmm. here on the earth. Um, even John, when he's measuring out the temple, he says, leave out the court of the Gentiles mm-hmm. because it's given to them. Mm-hmm. So right there, it starts setting us up for this third temple that we're talking about that will be on Temple Mount, on Mount Moriah, mm-hmm. where we know that the, the Dome of the Rock, the, the profane thing, the common thing, the court of the Gentiles, you can actually have this temple that yeah. Ezekiel's talking about, that John is talking about from the book of Revelation side by side with the Dome mm-hmm. of the Rock and then the temple on it the other side wild. of that. With that, that wall of separation yeah. to protect those who would come to worship at the temple. So it perfectly fits. Yes. Yeah. That's Which amazing. Is- yeah. So guys, we are in the time that Book of Revelation was being written. We are living in that time. Like we're a part of that. God put us here at this specific time and we have to become aware of the things that are happening to prepare ourselves because God is like, I don't want you to be in darkness that that day will overtake you. Um, You talk about end time things and crazy how people just shut off. It's like no one knows the day or the hour and then it's like nothing else. And And we're going to be out of here and it doesn't matter. And yet here we are. are. We're watching these things unfold before our very eyes. And this isn't conspiracy theory stuff. This is stuff that I was an eyewitness of with the Mm -hmm. red heifers. Um, I, I saw them. I was with the rabbis, um, you know, we're, we're watching, you know, literally, like we said, the Sanhedrin reconvening, the priests are ready, they're practicing, mm-hmm. they have the implements that go inside that temple. Mm-hmm. And what we want to do is break down that this is the temple of God, Revelation 11, 1. Mm-hmm. And, you know, what is so amazing, so the whole thing about how we're the, you know, the, the living temple mm-hmm. right now, mm-hmm. and that the, the, the spirit of the living God resonates, mm-hmm. it literally resides inside of us. Right. And we're kind of like little mini walking tabernacles, you know, all over the place, um, which is true. It is. This is it true. Is for sure. But it is also mm-hmm. true that God, starting on Mount Sinai, spoke to Moses and actually gave him specific detailed instructions 
for the tabernacle of God, and it was for him to actually reside, to have his holy presence there in the holy of holies. So Moses comes down from the the mount, you know, mountaintop after spending time with God. He's got the Ten Commandments, and he's got literally the blueprints Mm -hmm. of this tabernacle. Mm -hmm. And what's so cool about that is they are, it's a direct, uh, like, translation of what is in heaven Mm, that's what it's showing because god desires to dwell with with men Mm -hmm. exactly so it's this whole uh the reality of heaven it's a mirror Mm -hmm. of that reality coming down so it is holy um and like we said so many pastors different teachers leaders are coming against this third temple but why? When it's called the temple of God. Ezekiel 43, 7 says, Son of man, this is the place of my throne and mm. the place of the soles of my feet where I will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel forever. So he dwells inside of us, of course, but he's also wanting a physical location to dwell with his people. Right, and right. we just have to come to grips with that and understand that. Right. And if we can get that down, then we can understand like why we should support. Right everything else well what's so amazing is um the antichrist is the one who's actually he's revealed Mm -hmm. at this third Mm -hmm. temple so you go from ezekiel 42 verse Mm -hmm. 20 with the wall of separation the profane thing common thing from the holy and um and then there's no chapter breaks in the original text right so it rolls right into ezekiel 43 verses 1 through 7 where you literally have the holy spirit coming in to that third temple Mm -hmm. that we're talking about in the end times, which is in the near future for us, you have uh, the the son of man actually comes into the temple, which Mm -hmm. that's Daniel's reference of Jesus Christ himself. Mm -hmm. And then you have the name of God, Father God coming into Mm -hmm. that temple. So the Trinity coming and exposing, uh, inhabiting that place, his glory filling that third temple and meeting with his kids um, at this specific Kairos moment, this timing, you know, Mm -hmm. this prophetic time that we're living in. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's funny because a lot of people are like, if I support this, I am accelerating the process and uh, and the end time is going to come quicker when in reality, like... We don't have that power. We are just able to see the signs of what's going to happen. God loves us and he wants us to know those things. And so we have no power to bring about a quicker end times. Now, all of this has to be completely and totally the timing of the Lord and the way of the Lord. And we get to just see what he's doing, come alongside in Mm -hmm. his word, Mm -hmm. and then it happening in real time. And come alongside and support what support. God is actually doing. Yeah. And his heart is that all Israel, true, all true Israel mm-hmm. would be saved. Yes. And so, um, you know, the fact that people are saying that this is the Antichrist temple when the word of God is actually saying it's his. Mm-hmm. And what he calls holy, we should not call like profane or right. common. Mm-hmm. And that's what the church is actually doing because we're really, we're, we're it says my people perish for lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Um, And so you want to be careful. You don't want to be calling something common or profane, oh my gosh, or the Antichrist temple, when the Lord says it's holy and it's Mm -hmm. mine. Mm -hmm. There should be a fear of the Lord on that. There should, for sure. Yeah. So, um, So then this is what's so wild is the Antichrist, he comes on the scene to that temple Mm -hmm. and there's no break in those chapters, 42, 43, the the Trinity comes, meets with his people that, you know, literally on that day. And now the Antichrist is the one who comes on the scene. Mm -hmm. He is the one who then defiles that temple at Mm -hmm. that point in time. And because he does that and it's, it's a blasphemy, he gets there and he says, I am God Mm -hmm. but his God's chosen people have already their eyes have been open they look on him whom they pierce they know who Jesus is their Messiah always has been always was and um and 
now the Antichrist is the one who starts to pursue them. He's the one who stops the sacrifices, yes. as we see in Daniel chapter eight. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it's not God who does, you know, says this isn't holy, and it, it's the Antichrist. And for him doing that, that blasphemy, he actually is going to be thrown into the lake of fire mm-hmm. because coming to that holy temple that is God's, mm-hmm. where He meets with His people, yeah. and for that blasphemy. That's what he gets thrown into the lake of fire for. So the whole point in all of this is, you know, uh, to to see that these are the times that we're living in, mm-hmm. that the church needs to kind of wake up and, and realize this is not the Antichrist temple, mm-hmm. um, that God does meet with his people at this third temple, and that this third temple that's talked about in Ezekiel um, is is not the millennial mm-hmm. uh, temple. Um, there will be a millennial mm-hmm. temple, meaning when Jesus Christ comes back, his second coming, right? And um, he he there's it's the the temple of the the kingdom. It says mm-hmm. and. That is talked about in Ezekiel 46. Mm. Now, what's interesting, Annalie, mm-hmm. and we'll just maybe like to wrap all this up because people are going, all right, you've lost me. <laughs> Sacrifices, <laughs> temples. Let me blow your mind a little bit more. Ezekiel 46 actually talks about the millennial temple. Mm-hmm. And it says that there's going to be sacrifices that are daily taking place in the millennium. It talks about um, offering sacrifices, like Thanksgiving Mm -hmm. sacrifices, the new moon sacrifices, feast day sacrifices. You go ahead, look it up Uh yourself, Ezekiel 46. Sacrifices aren't going anywhere. They're not going anywhere. And um, now, the sacrifice for the remission, the taking away of Mm -hmm. sins, that was once and for all. That was Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, and and that is that is finished. That is done. That will never be repeated again. But there are these other sacrifices that the Lord is going to continue mm-hmm. through even the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. It's amazing. So this is why mm-hmm. we need to know what the Bible actually says, not go with kind of the traditions of man. Right. Um, what your pastors you know. are saying. Yeah. Like, let's let's ask the questions for ourselves instead of just believing what. A pastor would say, and and just dig into the word for right. yourself, right? And see what it's saying, yes. and believe that above, you right. know, what your uh, seminary taught pastor has said to That's you. Right. We have to ask these questions for ourselves yeah. and dig into it right. for ourselves and see what the word is saying. Right. This is where the Lord is like, work out your own salvation in yeah. fear and trembling. And I guess what our heart is mm-hmm. is to bring these things forward um, that are really controversial, but yeah. they they shouldn't be. There's a clarity. You know, Daniel says in the last days that these things will be opened up to us, that we're a mystery before because we're the generation that needs to know these things. Yeah, because we're going to see it play out in front of our eyes. So we want you, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, with us to be supporting what God supports. Mm -hmm. So we should be praying for the third temple. We should be supporting the Jews as they, um, uh, you know, are working towards this um, coming to fruition because God's glory is going to come and fill that temple. Yeah. He has a purpose and a plan for it. And um, this should be exciting. This should be something mm-hmm. we should all be uh, participating in, excited about praying um, and supporting them. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I mean, there's a promise for us in this. Genesis 12, 3 says, I will bless those who bless you, Amen. Yes. which is Israel, and I will curse those who curse you. Right. And so we have a promise to be blessed yeah. in our support of them and our prayer for them um and so it it works both ways for both of us yeah exactly it's great yeah Yeah. so okay well i think maybe next week we're we're maybe going to talk about the rapture yes okay yeah we're gonna go there with that because oh my goodness you ask someone about that yeah crazy right crazy crazy we'll go into that yeah we will All right, so that is a wrap on the second episode of Let's Go There with Annalie and Annie. We hope it has brought you new insight and encourages you to go there with your friends and family on these important issues. If you did find this helpful, drop us a comment on our social media platforms, on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. Let us know your thoughts, your comments, and if you have some topics for us to cover, because we really want to go there on things that you care about. Uh, Share, share share this. The more we talk about these topics, the less crazy they sound. See you next week on a new episode of Let's Go There with Annalie and Annie.